Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Data Cloud Now. I'm currently in New York City at Advertising Week, where I am now joined by Booty Tanzi, VP of Product at Experian Marketing Services. Booty, looking forward to diving in with you here today. Likewise, thank you for having me. To start with, what role does AI in machine learning play in enhancing data-driven marketing strategies for Experian, and where do you see its potential growing? Yeah, that's a good question. So when we think about uh, AI and, and machine learning specifically, it has a very important uh, role in our products. So when we think about our product portfolio, we like to think of it as two product families. First family is what we call consumer sync, which is our identity offering. And the second family is our consumer view product, which is think of it as consumer insights, marketing attributes, audiences, and, and the like. So, um, so the, the goal in each of those things is very similar uh, in terms of usage of, of AI, which is understanding consumer behavior, right? So uh, when it comes to identity, for example, the goal is uh, to, to stitch together multiple identity signals back to a consistent profile that is uh, relevant for, for marketers to be able to target. So we, we process trillions of signals every day uh, to be able to do that. So machine learning helps tremendously because it helps us deal with the amount of data, but also help us create the right uh, linkages by cleansing and creating accurate outcomes. Uh, on the marketing attributes and consumer view side of things, we have a similar goal of understanding user behavior, whether it's declared information and provided by the user or predicting future behavior. You have to be able to work with a lot of data and understanding and, and process it. So machine learning plays a very critical role in both of those aspects. Now, if you think about the future of it as AI and machine learning gets better, everything I just mentioned will organically get better and will have- And accelerate. Higher, exactly, accelerating, exactly, yep. Um, Booty, how does using Experian data and identity and the Snowflake platform, including clean rooms, enhance targeting and measurement securely? Yeah, great question. So before I can answer that question, I should probably talk about a little bit how we have built products together between Experian and That'd Snowflake. Be so we have done primarily two things. One is we brought in the Experian data assets, the ones I mentioned, consumer view and consumer identity and, and consumer insights into Snowflake to be a native application or native product access, such that our joint customers can easily access Experian data inside of Snowflake. So that's number one. And when you do that, um, you're, you're removing a lot of uh, problems and boundaries out of the picture by you know, uh, giving seamless access to data, making things very efficient, uh, and giving a lot of control to users, which as a result turns into time spent on actually doing the things that matter. Uh, meaning using high quality data for targeting, measurement, all, all other identity use cases. So uh, when I think about that, the, the, the measurement and, and targeting effectiveness really improves as you use both of those products. The second thing that we have done is uh, taking those assets and making them compatible with different uh, Snowflake features, such as the clean room that you mentioned, right? So uh, when we think about the clean rooms, now, with the joint partnership, we can call in or bring in Experian data assets into clean rooms when partners are collaborating, meaning they're trying to match their data with, with, with each other and together, right? And they would use Experian identity spine to match data with each other. They would use consumer signals and consumer insights to better understand their, those consumers, which as a result, give them a better, better view of who to target, how to measure, and really accurately measure at scale. Great to hear, Booty. I want to dive a little bit deeper into this. How does the partnership between Snowflake and Experian Marketing Services offer more value to clients? Yeah, there, there are a lot of ways that the partnership offers value, but if I had to pick three and kind of summarize at a high level, um, number one, as I mentioned briefly, is seamless integration, right? So we have these natively available inside a platform. It cuts down the time of, you know, have needing to bring in data uh, needing to move data in or out, right? So like everything happens in the same environments natively, which is which is a big uh, value for our customers. Uh, the second thing is um, really the, I would put it in a bucket of privacy, security, and data governance, right? Snowflake have built a lot of good controls in place in the platform for allowing and controlling who accesses data, how data should be joined with each other, and what is the outcome, what data can be extracted. So when we think about all these things, uh, it, it is an important value. But on top of that, both companies, Experian and Snowflake, are rooted in um, important security practices and, and, and 
compliant with a lot of different privacy uh, regulations out there. So uh, both companies start with privacy and security first in mind. So that brings in the value uh, from the get-go. And then when you add data governance on top of it, it brings a really good setup for, for consumers uh, or, or customers of joint, joint customers of ours. Um, the third one I would say is allowing new use cases or unlocking new use cases. Now that the Experian data set is available inside of Snowflake, anytime Snowflake creates a new feature or a new functionality, um, making those data sets compatible with those features becomes very easy. So data clean rooms is a very great example because um, a couple of years ago, this use case wasn't really in the radar of many people, but now that we have that data in there and then clean rooms really became a really hot topic in the last two years, that data is not compatible with it, right? So you're, you're unlocking data collaboration use cases with the power of, of the two platforms. Great to hear how the partnership is continuing to evolve. Moody, from your seat, how is the role of high quality data evolving to enable effective marketing as industry standards and consumer expectations shift? Yeah, you, you touched on a few things there. So maybe I'll, I'll try to um, define those for, for our conversations first. So uh, when I think about high quality data, right? I think of highly accurate, scalable, um, recent, relevant, as well as ethically sourced. And you can probably add more definitions to it, but let's start with that broad, okay. with, with, with that small definition, right? So um, you, you mentioned about the, the fact that, you know, consumer expectations are changing, uh, privacy standards are changing. Um, when it comes to the evolving nature of technology, every time we engage with a, with a service or a product, there is an increased expectation from consumers about personalization and customization. So what I mean by that is, if you go to uh, stream some content from a platform, you are start, people are starting to expect that the platform will make recommendations based on their previous uh, streaming uh, history or their, their taste. Uh, similarly, if you go to a, um, a shopping platform and you start searching for products, you're expecting the platform to show you relevant products that will go along with what you're searching for. So uh, in order to do those things, you need to have high quality data, right? Why? Because you first need to understand your consumer. To understand your consumer, you have to start with high quality data. Now, a lot of big platforms have a lot of uh, first party data. However, first party data is not always enough because as the privacy landscape is shifting, as the signal deprecation trends are, are continuing to happen, even having access to first party data is becoming tricky. So brands and platforms find the need to enrich their data with third party data. And that's where the importance of high quality, high quality data comes in because if you really wanna understand your consumer, you need to start from a high quality data point to really give them the right recommendation. If you wanna do personalization, if you wanna create custom experiences, you really need to understand the user. So from that perspective, I think the, the importance of high quality data is increasing uh, because the demand on pre being precise, being a trusted brand is, is out there. I like that a lot. Thank you, Rudy. Very much need that big picture view. How are advancements in identity resolution impacting cross-channel marketing effectiveness? Yeah, so in order to be effective in marketing and even cross-channel cross marketing, you, again, you have to understand the user. But Identity resolution plays a very key role in identifying the user or understanding the user. So what I mean by that is today, users are represented by different identity touch points across the internet based on their consumption of digital uh, content, right? So, and as the industry evolves, this gets a more complicated problem. So there are various trends, but all of them have some one thing in common, which is the fragmentation and the complication around user signals. So let's, let's give you a few examples. First one is, as user behavior changes and then we start consuming content on different devices, such as connected TV, different identifiers are popping up. Um, as technology improves and people start uh, using more advanced technologies like IPv6 addresses instead of IPv4 addresses, now you're introducing one other signal into the mix. Uh, privacy as, is, is kind of is shifting, right? As well as some technological advancements are happening in different browsers. And that's forcing the industry to innovate and introduce new identifiers, whether it's deterministic IDs like the UID2s and hash TMLs of the world or hybrid probabilistic IDs like ID5 ID. Now a user is actually 
being represented by many more IDs than just, let's say, a single ID in the past. So if you think about the full picture here, I just introduced like five or six identifiers in a couple of minutes for, for the course of, of, of the user's journey. Uh, and this is on top of what's already existed. So a, a, a marketer's ability to be efficient at marketing and, and, and advertising is really dependent on, on understanding the user. So if we go back to that statement, we have to be able to work with all of these signals to get a full picture of the user. And that lies in having a very robust identity resolution strategy and in-house technology. So what we see is that companies who do pioneer in this, companies who do invest in having an in-house identity engine as well as sourcing a good quality data, is very quick to adopt to all of these changes that I mentioned. And, and when a new signal comes up, it's not a big problem for them to adopt. They just add it as one more identifier to a profile. They're already prepared They're for it. They're already prepared for it, exactly. Versus a company who's not really um, investing in this is scratching their head to figure out like, oh, I was working on this one thing. Now there's these five other things I have to catch up on. It becomes a really big problem. So we tell this to all of our customers. It's really important that they invest in an in-house identity strategy combining first-party data with third-party data such that they can attack the problem from the core. And then as the industry evolves, it becomes very easy for them to update rather than having to think about it every time it changes. Very well put, Booty. Now I want to look towards what's next. As you look out on the future, how do you see Experian's role evolving in an increasingly data-driven world? Yeah, great question. So. Experian has been and will continue to enable data-driven advertising through connectivity. And what I mean by that is uh, we are a trusted partner for a lot of companies in the industry, both from an identity and consumer insights perspective. A lot of company, companies use our data um, to understand their consumers, to communicate with their with their partners. And we're kind of that connecting tissue, if you will, between different companies through our data. Um, and we're proud of that and we continue investing in that capability. So I, I do believe that we will continue to see that trend. We will maintain our position in that area. And then we will continue investing in different use cases that, would, that our data will enable. To give an example, um, this last past summer, we have made an announcement for two new exciting features. One of them was leveraging Experian data to build a new type of contextual targeting solution, which is powered and, and influenced uh, by the Experian data. And the other one is um, making Experian audiences available inside of, um, inside of Privacy Sandbox. So um, those two advancements are just you know, quick examples of what can be done with as new use cases unlock, as long as you have a very robust uh, identity and data foundation. So we will continue making investments in these areas and trying to find new use cases to support our clients. I'm looking forward to seeing what comes next. What key innovations are you focusing on to ensure Experian remains a leader for the next century? Yeah, I think it, it kind of summarizes everything that we discussed, but you know, Invest, further investing in, in machine learning and AI, investing in high quality data and maintaining that um, you know, trusted brand image, powering and connecting our network to each other, right, with different high quality data sets, as well as trying to look for new use cases to help them um, maintain their advertising and, and marketing use cases in the signal loss landscape. Well, Woody, thank you so much for joining me on Data Cloud yeah, Now. Thank you very I much really enjoyed me. our chat. Likewise, thank you very much. And for the audience watching, I'm Ryan Green with Data Cloud Now at Advertising Week in New York. I'll see you soon.